Desmond Harrison. He had the cutest, squishiest little face. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Welcome to Still a Part of Us. We are so grateful to have Chelsea on today and tell us, um, telling her, her story of her sweet son, Desmond, who has the squishiest little face. So we're so, so excited. Chelsea, thank you so much for coming on and sharing a little bit about who you guys are and everything. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to tell his story and continue to make Desmond a part of our everyday lives. And yeah. so, oh. wonderful. Okay, well, um, to begin, Chelsea, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what your family looks like, especially at the time of um, Desmond's birth? Yep. Um, so I'm Chelsea. My husband Michael and I we have been married five years and we have a two and a half year old daughter. She's turning three here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. She is super wild. <laughs> we are super busy with her. Yep. And uh, yeah, he has quite the fun personality and she keeps us smiling and laughing for sure. Um, I work PRN is what they call it. So per request needed a little bit less than part-time. Um, for a hospital as a certified occupational therapy assistant. Oh, awesome. Okay. And yeah, I work on their inpatient rehab floor. Mm -hmm. And then my husband also works in healthcare. He is a home health nurse. Which so, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, he, he is in his element. So he has a really flexible schedule. And I was kind of bouncing off working and from home as well, doing um, a virtual job through the schools, doing occupational therapy oh, for like rural areas. That's cool. Yeah, we I did that before Desmond's birth. And then after when this next school year started, I said, oh, I'm just going to keep to my my hospital job. And so that's been good to take a step back. And so, yeah, we were bounce. We were really busy just bouncing around like. Michael could schedule his patients around my times that I would, I would see my students. That is and really super nice that there was you guys, it sounds like you guys like spend time, like spending time with each other and have the schedules to be able to do that. So, yeah. And I think that comes from like, Michael saw that his family was so busy growing up and we've just tried and mine too, like parents both having to work full time is really difficult. And so we've been blessed enough to um, try and keep me at home as much as possible with our daughter, Eliana. We call her Ellie. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. great. And a little bit of context. When was Desmond born at the time of this recording? He was born July 5th, 2023. So it really has not, it's not even been a year, you guys, for Chelsea. So just kind of keep that in mind when we're um, hearing her story. So yeah, it's still pretty new and, and so grateful that you're willing to tell his story. Um, so quick, I mean, so, so early actually. So. Yeah. And I think that's been part of my grieving is trying to find space for him and to continue to remember him because with our lives and my daughter just taking every moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's it's kind of been hard to grieve in a way that allows us time to do so. At least it wasn't that way in the beginning, but yeah. now we're almost seven months out. Things we have to slow down and and really take the time. And so this yeah. I felt like was a an important piece for me to tell his story in another way. Like my husband and I 
have recorded our story together, just us two, but I think this is, I don't know, an important way that maybe some people that don't feel comfortable asking all the details might be able to, to hear his story and to feel like they know Desmond and not know the trauma of Chelsea and Michael, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a difference. There's a, I mean, it's interlaced, but there's a difference. Yeah. He had a little, he had his life and was here. So, okay. Well, um, and then tell me a little bit about your family, um, like what you guys like to do for fun and, and what you, yeah. In your spare time. Yeah. Um, we are big hikers. Mm. We love hiking, especially so we're from Utah. We're surrounded by gorgeous peaks and these wonderful canyons that we get to explore. Yeah. And we used to do it even a couple times a week. And things obviously slow down when you have kids. Yep. <laughs> and you can only push your child to sit in a backpack for so long. Uh, yep. <laughs> But we also, we just try to stay active and um, we have a little bike trailer for our daughter and we enjoy games, board games, card games, and just in general spending time um, with our families as well. So mine and Michael's families are all close. Oh, that's so nice. It's just a blessing, I think, <laughs> to have family nearby. It it really is. And we're grateful for it. It has been a lifesaver. So well, Okay, good. Okay, so then obviously you guys have Ellie and she, she I'm assuming she was planned and um, was Desmond planned? Was that something that was part of what you guys wanted to, you wanted to expand your family or was this a little bit of a surprise? So Desmond and Ellie were both planned. Ellie, we, I was still in my program for mm -hmm. um, occupational mm -hmm. therapy assisting and at one point we were just like, uh, it's never going to be convenient. Like we might as well. And so we yeah. were just like, let's just start our family. And we always wanted to have siblings close together. Mm -hmm. Not like too close though. Right. right. <laughs> so we were trying to do the math, right. And be mathematical of like, okay, two years is a good range. Yeah. And since my closest sibling was five years older than me and he's my brother. So it's not like we really had much in common. Right. And yeah. my two older sisters were also quite older. So mm -hmm. 11 years apart and then eight years apart. So I didn't feel like I necessarily had like a buddy at home. Yeah, totally. And it's, yeah, it's very yeah. different. Okay. But that's so, but that was really smart to think about it and plan for that. Yeah. So that was important to me in like starting to try for Desmond, like I want Ellie to have a sibling, I want them to be close. And I think at the time, I really wanted a girl because I was like, they'll just be best friends. Yeah. And it'll be great. And I think as soon as we we did genetic testing, okay, because I did not want to wait to find out what the gender was. Okay, yes. Um, uh huh. And I think I had told Michael multiple times, like, I think it's a girl. No, I want it to be a girl, but I think because I want it to be a girl, it's going to be a boy. <laughs> and lo and behold, yes, <laughs> I spoke it out and it, happened. and it happened. Or maybe just in the back of my mind, I knew I was like, there's no way it's another girl. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah. um, and that was about 10 weeks or so. Yeah, I remember the test taking forever to get back to us. I think it could have been a holiday weekend or. But yeah, I was very anxiously awaiting the results. And then you Google all the things of like, okay, all the test results, what could, and everything came back normal. Okay. So there wasn't anything there that gave us any signals that would have told us something happened or would happen. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. great. So. Um, I, I jumped the gun in a little bit, honestly, when you guys <laughs> found out that you were pregnant, though. Did you tell, did you tell Michael right away or did you tell me about when you guys found out? Oh yeah. He's always, so for the, every single pregnancy test, I never keep it to myself. I'm always like, okay, do you want to wait with me for these? Like however many seconds it yeah. tells you to wait. Cause yeah. I'm like, I I'm going to pick it up and look at it. He's like, don't look at it. So <laughs> we were very excited yeah. and I'm glad you, you brought us back to this because there's a fun story. So yeah, we found out we're pregnant. Great. 
And with Ellie, we had waited, right? Like, oh, we got to keep it in the safe window. What we thought there was a safe window. We have totally learned that is not the case now. Oh, so with Desmond, we're like, we just got to tell everyone. Like I was probably barely seven weeks, which means you're more like, I think we had only known for them like two to three weeks, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was Thanksgiving and we're at Michael's family's house. Is it Thanksgiving? Yeah. Wow. That was a long time ago already. Um, Thanksgiving. And all of a sudden we're all together. We hadn't gathered for the meal yet, but his brother who's in the room texts everyone a picture of him and his wife with pictures or with a shirt that said, do July, 2023. And Michael and I, cause we had planned, we were going to tell that that yeah, day. Yeah. And Michael and I just like looked at each other, like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> like we don't want to steal their thunder, but also cause it, it was their first. Yeah. And they were newly married. Like I think theirs was truly a honeymoon child. Like, oh right off the bat they didn't think they'd get pregnant easy and so we were shocked and then we were like well now how do we tell everyone like we don't want to steal the thunder yeah but then we had like asked them some more questions without them knowing we're like so what day and they're like July 15th and my due date was July 20th and we're just like oh holy cow how did this like what are the odds this was not planned and this is his brother who he's really close I mean he's close to all his brothers but this brother they've spent a lot of time together and and they we live close to them too Mm -hmm. like 15 minutes and so instantly we've started like oh they're gonna be best buds yeah yeah that's so so cute so did you guys end up announcing it then (laughs) well we decided we're like, okay, we'll we'll wait it out because yeah, again, yeah. everyone's so excited. We're like, we're not stealing their thunder. And then as the night like progressed, Ellie was getting so cranky. And we had this plan. We were gonna play one of these games. I don't know if anyone knows what jackbox games are. Oh, yeah, I know what those are. Like, yeah. Yeah, you you play on your phone and everyone joins in for it. Anyway, we had this plan, like if a question comes up it's going to be completely unrelated. And we're just going to say like, Chelsea is pregnant on the screen or something. Yes. yes. And then Ellie was having such a hard night because she'd probably skipped a nap. Let's be honest. So we're like, we can't, there's no way because she's not having it. So we drove home and (laughs) we all get home and they actually decided to play the game. But since it's virtual, we could do it at home. Yeah. So once we got Ellie down to sleep, then we also zoom while we do it with the yeah. family. We started doing this like during COVID, during co- pretty yep. regularly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the games we all used to play pretty often. And yeah, lo and behold, we had the opportunity. There was a qu- perfect question. I can't remember word for word, but we ended up putting like Michael put something in relation to it, and then I said I'm pregnant, and they were like thinking that it was April. So my sister in law who had said she was pregnant, but then they're like. But then Michael's answer doesn't. And so you could see everyone's like. The, like the cogs are on. moving. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's like through Zoom and everyone's so confused. And it's a big group in front of like a laptop. So you can't really like necessarily see what everyone's thinking. Yeah. And then someone was like, wait, what? <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're, we're due July 20th. And everyone's like, what in the world? So that was uh, really fun. Yeah, that is re- that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was just hilarious to be honest. Like the whole day, Michael and I like making faces to each other the yeah, whole time. Like, like, oh, what are we gonna did, do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, did that just is this happening? Like, that's wild. So, oh well, yeah. th- that. But you also let them have their their time to. And and it's fun to think about having buddies and and cousins and I just think that's yep. that's so fun. Well, that that's a cute way of <laughs> announcing. Yeah, that. that was fun, and that was obviously just with Michael's family. And then I think 
we had gotten together with my family maybe the day after for Thanksgiving Uh so that my sister could come into town. Yeah, they came into town. So they live about two and a half hours out. Um, And we had a cute little shirt for Ellie that we had her wear. It just said, I'm being promoted to big sister. And at first, like, nobody noticed. (laughs) What? Yeah, it was just like, oh, she's just wearing a cute little pink shirt. And we just kind of waited. Anyone? For like one by one for people to be like, what is your shirt saying? <laughs> so that was uh, fun. That is fun. I was like, mm-hmm. pe- then it just spreads, I'm sure. It, yeah. Was she excited to, I mean, she was still really like, was she two? Yeah. Right yet? I don't think she wasn't two yet. Yeah. She had to have been right around 18 months. Yeah. Okay. So she maybe wasn't totally getting. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> but we we tried really hard so right around that time that we like found out we were pregnant started preparing is when she kind of started her like terrible twos phase (laughs) and like instantly we were like oh my gosh what have we gotten ourselves into (laughs) what have we done I know yep exactly we're like oh shoot (laughs) maybe that's just like god's sense of humor just like (laughs) All right, you guys wanted a second one. Like, I guess that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that's so fun. <laughs> okay, and then you had, did you end up going into the doctors, your OBGYN, pretty early, like eight, nine weeks or so? I think that's about the time. Yep, yep. I had the same OBGYN I had for my daughter. Awesome. Who we just loved. Uh, his name is Dr. Pearson. We really bonded with him. He's just a cool guy. And more of a story, too, to tell you why we love this place so much. I went, When I was pregnant with my daughter, Ellie, mm-hmm. I had just called the hospital and said, who do you recommend? Who do you <laughs> like? Like, what does everyone say? Like, just- who do they like? They're like, okay, Dr. Pearson. I'm like, great, book me. Done. Let's do it. Yeah. And uh, cause I knew I wanted to deliver at the hospital that I work. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. have a lot of trust in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and so I was like, okay. And come to find out later on, I was telling my mom about the name of the clinic and she's like, oh, that was the name of the clinic where I went for you, but it was at a different building at the time. So oh. it, it was at an older hospital. They tore it down. Yeah. They kept the same name of that clinic. And I was like, I had no idea. Then I start telling her about my nurse. Yeah. Cindy, who's incredible. Uh-huh. She's got the cutest little short haircut, the like brightest personality. And my mom's like, wait, I had a Cindy. <laughs> and I remember at the time she had short hair then too. And she was obviously much younger at the time when I was pregnant with you. She's like, it can't be the same, right? And I was like, I don't know. And then I asked Cindy the next time I saw her, I was like, what are the odds you used to work with Dr. Terry, who was my OB, well, I mean, my mom's ob joint right. for me. She's like, yes, I worked for Dr. Terry for the, in all of his years up until when he passed. Yeah. But like, it just like blew my mind. I was like, you helped with me. My, yeah. And she was, was like stoked. And that actually has happened with her she's delivering I guess she's not delivering but she's no, no, no but she's assisting. helping the, yeah yeah she's helping the grandkids of the oh. kids that she helped yes exactly <laughs> she's delivering generations essentially <laughs> like that's yes cool. <laughs> so it was just like luck of the draw like yeah. calling someone up who do you Randomly. recommend yeah I end up with the doctor that replaced Dr. Terry who delivered oh. me like and then and you have who, the same nurse <laughs> same nurse and I just felt so much more at home yeah. even knowing that yeah and so yeah That's there was so cool even though we moved away a little further out from that hospital after Ellie was born when we got pregnant with Desmond I was like no I'm driving 30 minutes yeah, There's it's worth yep. it mm-hmm. yep because there's a hospital closer but by like 15 minutes and in my head, I'm like, no, I'm driving the 30 minutes. Yeah, There's you got to no be with people that you feel age. comfortable with, I think. 
I mean, they're poking yeah. around in very sensitive areas. So come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So once you have like a good trust, a good yeah. bond, it's like, no, I'll drive. I'm good driving. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's fine. It's good. Oh, that's so cool. And mm-hmm. um, did they end up doing ultrasound at that time at that first visit? Um, yeah. Okay. Because some some p- places do and some places don't. So. Yep. So my uh, Dr. Pearson did ultrasounds whenever possible, like if mm. the room was available mm-hmm. just for a checkup. Then after he would check, he'd be like, yeah, you want to pull out the ultrasound? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. That's so, so cool. We got, we got a few little ultrasounds um, and we made sure Ellie was there for one of them. Oh, good. So even though who knows if that ever... <laughs> clicked in her mind yeah but. yeah was michael mm-hmm. michael was able to come along with you for a lot of your appointments yep for most of them um yeah i want to say with desmond for most of them yeah that's awesome that's that the flexibility of a home health nurse i mean like that's so great <laughs> we can't we can't talk it up enough <laughs> yeah so great yeah that's so awesome okay so you looked good and then you guys got the genetic testing um, to find out, which was really fun too. <laughs> yep. And, and all of the genetic tests at that time were looking fine. Everything was good. Yep. And no, I had both pregnancies, Desmond and Ellie, like absolutely no indications, like all was well, all awesome. was well for both of them. Yeah. And yeah. how are you feeling? Oh, so for my pregnancy with Desmond, I, oh, I was just tired <laughs> and I had a wild toddler. Yeah. I was going to say, well, you Still throw do. that in the, yeah, throw, throw a little kid in there in the mix. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I was sick at the beginning with Desmond, but that mm-hmm. was nothing new that had happened with Ellie. And, okay. Um, for some reason, my morning sickness kind of starts later on like most people I think start when they're super early Mm -hmm. mine tends to come around like week 10 or 11 I want to say yeah kind of strange yeah and then it lasts I think it lasted for maybe a month um we always keep those emesis bags around and grab them from the hospital (laughs) yeah yeah Uh, living that life but (laughs) my husband always makes fun of me I would always you know get sick vomit and then I'd be back to eating because I'm like well I'm still starving I just threw everything up I gotta get some food in me <laughs> yeah he's he has always made fun of that like oh my goodness so, <laughs> that's that's awesome uh, yep um okay and so you're going along doing fine um did you um have the like the anatomy scans like uh scheduled for around 18 to 22 weeks like when when did you guys actually go in for that one yeah I want to say it was probably 21 ish weeks I could be wrong but um they have a radiologist in my clinic but my insurance didn't take it so Mm -hmm. they um referred us to a maternal fetal medicine doctor to do it that they had like I shouldn't say like specialized but I feel like there they are really really thorough and checking for everything yeah Mm -hmm. so with that ultrasound I remember taking it taking forever and it was kind of worrying me because she was like trying to get certain angles Mm -hmm. I want to say she couldn't get a good angle of his heart yeah okay he kept turning around and one of the ventricles in his brain and she was just talking about that like the whole time and I just remember that table being so uncomfortable like I'm pretty (laughs) short And those tables aren't comfortable in the first place. And yes. And then I'm just like looking at Michael, like, oh my goodness, like, (laughs) when is this going to end? And then she actually asked the doctor to come in and that like raised alarms for me. I was like, yeah, oh, because she's like, I'm going to make sure like he takes a look too. And I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. Absolutely. It actually meant nothing. Nothing. He just wanted to get a look himself. I was like, oh. An hour and a half of you looking, and then the doctor still wants to look too. I was like, and maybe they did that with Ellie, but uh, I, yeah, with Desmond, I was just like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. 
How long? How much? How much longer do I have to say? An hour and a half is a a good chunk of time. That is a long ultrasound. Yeah, and they were just really trying to get him to move, and he was not moving. Mm. He's like, "No, I'm good right here. Thanks, cozy. Thanks, mom." <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh. Um, but everything essentially did look okay yeah. at that. Placenta was in the right place. He was positioned. I mean, at the time. He, I don't think he ever changed positions, but yeah, like he was the way he should have been, you yeah. know, no yeah. red flags at all. And okay. so it was just like, we were just going along with pregnancy number two as normal and okay. just kind of thought nothing of it, to be honest. Yeah. It was just like, this is just going about our business. When, yeah. um, when you guys did find out that you were having a boy, did you, um, already start having, coming up with names? Yeah, did- this is a good question. We had a name planned for Ellie if she was a boy. Okay. And it was Desmond. Okay. And it was from a movie. Well, it's it's based on a true story of um, Desmond Doss, who is a World War II hero. Mm -hmm. I believe it was two. (laughs) My husband knows this way better than I do. (laughs) Um, And I had never seen the movie, the film, and when we were pregnant, my husband's like, you're watching this film. It's and time. It's, have you seen it? No, I, ha- I haven't. I haven't. Okay. It's incredible. So this man, Desmond Doss, I think he was a seventh day Adventist. So they don't believe in bearing arms. Mm-hmm. But then the war breaks out. His He decides he wants to volunteer. Is that the word? Enlist? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And... uh he decides that he's not going to bear arms like he had promised himself when he was younger that he wasn't going to ever mm-hmm. hold a gun again because his parent or his dad was really violent to his mother. And oh, uh-huh. lo and behold, he becomes a conscientious. Oh, what's the word? Uh, but anyway, they label you in the military if you are knowingly not following orders. Oh, OK. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so sorry to anyone who is in the military (laughs) that knows these terms. But um, basically, his story, he ends up becoming a medic. Oh, okay. And he has to go through court to prove that he is going to be there and not necessarily leave his troops, basically. Yeah, exactly. um, And anyway, like he relies specifically on prayer and the Lord to help him in this really awful battlefield and most of his troop gets injured and everyone was retreating and he decides instead of retreating with everyone else he was going to go find as many wounded that he could and he had to lower them down a cliff and it's just an incredible story and yeah it I don't do the story justice so if anyone is curious Desmond Doss or look up uh, Hacksaw Ridge, the movie. It's Hacksaw Ridge. It's so okay. Good. Okay. I'm going to have to look that up myself because yeah. I'm so curious. Because Desmond is not a very common name. And, right. And so I think it's, it's, it's a cool name. And, but I like it when names have a little bit of a meaning to it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. So, yeah. We definitely were like, this is Desmond when it was Ellie. Mm-hmm. And then when actually... I became pregnant with a boy. I think it became real enough that I was like, could I do this name? Like, cause I like names that aren't your typical names, but I want them to still be a traditional name. Right. Not like a, that's just my, my personality. I, I don't want my child to be like, so-and-so G. Yes. Right. Yes. Of like all the one different of, alphabet yeah. letters. Yeah, I was like one of four of those same kids in your in your school class. <laughs> so. Yeah, and and to have a name that also meant something was important. But I think my husband was absolutely sold. He's like, like, yep. As soon mm-hmm. as we found out Desmond was a boy, he was like, "It's Desmond." And I had a hard time coming back around to it for some reason. Uh-huh. Like, I was just worried. I'm like, is it too out there of a name? is it what you know and and then like there are different cultures that have that name mm-hmm. as more common and so yeah. I was like is that inappropriate you know like yeah. I, 
but then it's also like an Irish name. And so I was just like <laughs> going through all of the things in my head, like, okay, what are the possibilities that he, you know, you don't want yep. your kid to be made fun of. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so yep. I am that type where I have to think of every scenario of like, okay. And then as we got closer, it really took me almost like the whole pregnancy to be like, okay, I think it's Desmond. <laughs> feeling good. Feeling good now. I know it sometimes yeah. takes a minute to to come around to a name. Names are important. I really, names are important. And we went through the ring or two with our son's name. So. Yeah. yeah. And boys, I feel oh, like way harder. Way harder. I concur. Because you're like, <laughs> they need to have some like, it has to have some authority to it. But it, yeah, like, yes, right. there's, there's too much. There's, it's too much sometimes. <laughs> It is. Boy names are so much harder. Yeah. But. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So you're you guys are going along. Did you guys end up having a little any um uh baby shower or anything um for Desmond oh, because yeah. you know like when sometimes there's a a boy sh- shower after a girl shower you know that type of thing if there's yeah um I remember thinking to myself like oh I don't want to do a shower necessarily yeah. just I'm like. I just feel bad. Like I was so spoiled with my first. I'm like, I can't ask of all my friends to do that. Um, And I know my sister-in-law, Anna Paula was just like, we are giving you a shower. We are doing it. I was like, okay. Okay. And she's like in Peru where she grew up, like, it doesn't matter if it's your second or your fifth child, you have a shower. Like we got to, and she's like, even if we call it a sprinkle, so it's not as big. And I was like, she was thinking about going forth back and back and forth between that. But then meanwhile, of course, my sister-in-law, April, is yeah. pregnant around, and yeah. it's her first. And I'm like, how about, because I'm like, we can't just do one for me. And that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, for sure. So we ended up deciding, like, we'll just help out and do a shower for her. And I was fine with that. You know, I was like, it's my second. Like, she should, this is her first. She should have her own. Big, shower to herself yep, yep. and and that was good so and then all of a sudden I was given a surprise shower by my best friend oh because <laughs> she knew great. I that I was like no that I turned down the opportunity yeah. from my sister-in-law mm-hmm. and my husband had been in on it oh and yeah he he was very secretive they did pretty good usually my husband cannot keep a secret <laughs> And um, my friend lives in a little basement apartment and she had had me over for dinner. And I was like, well, it kind of feels weird not to bring Ellie or, or you, Michael. And he's like, it's fine. It's just a time to get away from, yeah. from Ellie and just have some time with Sydney. I was like, oh, I mean, okay. But in my mind, I'm like, normally we would just bring, bring both of them with me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and still I had like absolutely no inkling in my mind and I even showed up and before everyone jumped out I was like man you prepared a lot of food (laughs) I like saw the food I was like Sydney and then everyone came out I'm like oh my goodness (laughs) it was was not on my mind how fun that is really sweet (laughs) yeah it was was, a lot of food (laughs) it was really sweet and it was like really close tight knit like friends yeah. that I grew up with that were there and it was just a time to get excited and then two pregnancies were announced at that shower actually or maybe it was just the one but then we had known about my other friend that was also pregnant so, so yeah. fun yeah, yeah it's fun babies are fun and mm-hmm. celebrating people it's it, it's fun <laughs> yeah it was it was really special i was so surprised My friend Sydney loves that kind of stuff. She she? knows too. If I like know there's a surprise coming Uh that I go crazy. And so (laughs) she's like, we can't let her think that anything's going on and then just completely take her by surprise, which they did. Oh, that's that's fun. (laughs) That is so fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then you are coming, getting along. How were your later appointments? And kind of give me an idea of like what week you were at now and and how you were feeling. Yeah. um, Trying to think. 
we were still just chugging along. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like, I think Michael and I were having a hard time feeling connected to Desmond a little bit. How come? Um, We just felt that way because we were just like having enough air to like come up for air, you know, Mm. like from the week, like we were just busy with Ellie and it almost like everything didn't occur to me. Like I didn't notice his movements as much just because I was all in on Ellie and doing things. Whereas I remember totally different with Ellie. I remember doing kick counts. I remember like every night, you know, we would just like talk to her. And then this time around, Michael and I were getting, or I was getting later in the pregnancy and Michael and I were like, you know, just zonking out at night. And yeah. So we're like, oh, it, it's tough to feel that connection when you're just so absorbed in your day to day, at least for us. And I, I think that started to worry Michael a little bit. Like, am I ready to be a father? Like, I haven't even been able to like stop and really get excited. And, yeah. you know, it's tough also when you're the working dad trying to yeah. provide. And so we had those feelings later on. but. Still nothing came up in any of our appointments. We were just taking it by stride. Just And I remember Cindy, my nurse, saying, man, you do these pregnancies so easy, you could have 12. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, no. After, as soon as Ellie became a true toddler with tantrums, we were like, maybe we won't have four. Maybe we'll have three. Maybe we'll just chill it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because we always thought four. So, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that with Ellie, you were kick counting. Um, how was Desmond? So you didn't really super kick count with him or did you try no. and still do that? You didn't, you didn't. I didn't because I was like, oh, the first pregnancy went well. This one, absolutely nothing has, nothing you is, know, gone yeah. wrong. I always had blood pressure that was just fine. Yeah, all of those little make things, you pee yep. on that little thing mm-hmm. every time. Yep, mm-hmm. never had any sort of complication. So okay. I think we were just surviving our day to day. Yeah, and, and that happens. That's yeah for reals. And I think it came like by the end of the pregnancy, like towards the end. I think it took us by surprise. Like, oh my gosh, this is happening! Like, yeah. And then we started nesting big time. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that happens so. too. Um, when you, uh, how were his movements though? Like, were you, was he pretty active? Yeah, I think he would be if I'd like prod him. He, I don't remember him necessarily being a big kicker. Okay. Um, and when he did kick, it was in my ribs. <laughs> of course. I don't know if like my torso is, it is a weird <laughs> length, but oh. It was bad. My yeah. ribs were always just like super, super sore oh. all the time. So, sure. and in the last couple of weeks, I had noticed that he had found his favorite spot. Mm-hmm. So I was always lopsided. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, and I finally brought it up to Dr. Pearson. I'm like, is this normal? And I guess he had just like, it was his bottom. He had figured out, like, yeah, that's just his bum. And that's why his legs were like right up in my ribs. Oh, and he just can't. Yeah, his legs were just right there. He just liked that left side for some reason. But <laughs> okay, so not a huge kicker, but you definitely could feel his him moving around and kicking you in the ribs on occasion. <laughs> yep, and I would just I'd have to bother him to kind of move around a little bit. Mm-hmm. I remember, especially at night. Like, I remember hearing that most babies get active right when you're about to go to sleep. Yeah. But I think he was normally pretty chill, like, especially when I'm, like, inviting Michael to come and connect with him. Like, let's let's see if he's, you know, how he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Just always have to poke him, like, come on, buddy. (laughs) What you doing? You're you're being too chill. (laughs) Yep. Um, Okay, so then tell me, yeah, when things were going okay but you guys are pretty um starting to get a little bit more nesty now like were you just at home a lot together and we we had started to really put together the nursery Mm. 
in the last like 36 weeks and on. Uh, so we had gotten a, another crib because my daughter is, she's still in the crib to this yeah, day. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, we got to get in yeah. his own and another dresser set because we just have the two bedrooms. And so we, they're next to each other. So mm-hmm. we're like, okay, start putting his stuff, making it his own. And uh, we were given a really nice blanket. These are like famous in Utah, but those minky blankets. Yes. We were they're given so one soft. for our yeah. daughter. Oh, yeah, so soft. And so we're like, we can't not have one for Desmond. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's like, for us, we're like, man, it's hard to justify that price for a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> we're like so he's got to have his own. Yeah. So we had planned his nursery to be mountain themed. Mm. Um, we love the mountains, as we've said, and we had been trying to hike probably not nearly as much in the last like trimester, but still trying to go every now and again. Yeah. And so we're like, he's going to love the mountains. Um, so I have this beautiful minky blanket that has like woodland animals and oh. the that's what we based our color scheme mm-hmm. off of. And my mother-in-law ended up surprising me with a blanket. She crochets. She's a master of crochet. And she surprised me with a blanket that she had um, copied like the color scheme from our minky blanket and made it a crib size. And it was mountains. Cute. Yeah. How sweet. So we were getting excited. I was even cutting off tags off of all of the 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 clothes. clothes that we had for him. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, I remember. I think this was maybe a week before. I was up in that room with Ellie. She's probably bouncing on. We had the crib mattress on the ground for a while, mm-hmm. just so she could b- jump on it. Like yeah. She and I would start to like put stuff in his dresser. That was like our thing for a little while, like getting his room together. And I remember distinctly like as I'm cutting off these tags of these brand new clothes that I had bought and others had given me like what if I wasn't able to bring him home Hmm. and then I just continued on cutting the tags I'm like oh that was a weird thought you know like you have those intrusive Mm -hmm. thoughts that come every now and again and I just thought nothing of it absolutely nothing of it and who knew a week later that I, I wouldn't be bringing him home, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if that was, you know, necessarily a message to me of like a, a little warning, but I do distinctly for some reason, remember having that thought, you know, huh. and maybe even in my mind, I tried to justify it of like, well, maybe that's just my brain thinking of those who don't get to have that experience of taking him home. And I just, it never would have crossed my mind. It didn't worry me at all. I just thought, hmm, you know, that's awful for those that don't get to bring their child home. And yeah, it just completely blindsided us. That was not a worry in my mind to give you even more of a picture that like, we were just doing our regular old day to day. We were getting ready for him to come. So, And what week was that? So that had to have been either late 36 weeks Mm -hmm. or early in week 37. Okay. When I had that experience and yeah, we had all his nursery furniture up in that room Mm -hmm. at that time. So. Okay. And then um, tell me, yeah, when, when you guys, then what happened, I guess is. Yeah. Um, so Fourth of July weekend. Technically, I think Fourth of July was a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So the weekend before, we had gone on a hike with Michael's family, and this was the first hike I had done when I had been like truly big pregnant. Yeah, and uh, we did Stewart Falls. If anyone oh. knows that trail, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was a lot for me who hadn't done a hike in a while. I was yeah. kind of surprised. But I like rocked it on the way there. And then I think as soon as I sat down, I had this little backpack that turned into a chair. Yeah. As soon as I sat down, I was like, oh, no. Like, I remember, I think it was my hips. 
I had the hardest time getting back to the car the oh. whole way back. Um, I don't know if because I sat down, like my muscles like tightened up or, yeah. but they, like, I remember having a hard time. Like if you asked me to bring my knee up to like marching height, like I couldn't, like yeah. I couldn't lift my legs. It was so strange. And I just remember thinking like, how weird is this? Like I was, I was rocking it on the way there yeah. doing awesome. So we definitely took a lot longer to get back. And there was even a moment like I, I slipped on some loose dirt. Oh, uh huh. And somehow I caught my fall in like the weirdest split position. But again, had absolutely no worries. Everything was fine, you know. And mm-hmm. sometimes my brain goes back to that moment. But, you know, there's just no true answer of what could have happen right you know get into that a little bit but yeah still that weekend that was Saturday all is well we made it back (laughs) I I could walk the rest of the weekend that's that's good (laughs) (laughs) and then the fourth I remember Tuesday was it Tuesday I'm gonna have to look this on a calendar oh yeah totally do if you don't mind no I don't mind at all because there are details that I want to remember Right. Okay. So yeah, weekend passes. Mm -hmm. Then it's July 3rd. Mm -hmm. And we had my parents over for dinner that night. And we had been joking about how they needed to keep their phones like, don't put it on silent, mom. Right. Yeah. We're getting to that point because I was 37 37 weeks and like five or six days. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That could have actually, I think we had them over on the 4th of July. That's okay. what happened Okay. Um, that evening for dinner. My husband ends up working a lot of holidays. They usually yeah. need him a lot. And so our holidays aren't necessarily like big. It's like the weekends before that we usually get fun things the in. Time. Yeah. Um, but in the community that we live in, they put on little things. And so I was with Ellie for the 4th of July and we went to this little community. Um, They had community outing, I guess I should say, or um, event. And they had blow ups and cotton candy machines. Oh, how fun is that? And I, yeah. And I just remember it was like so hot that day. (laughs) And especially standing next to those blow up, like bounce houses like yeah. I feel like the heat even the like heat. radiates off of them yeah too. <laughs> yes and she was insisting on playing in there and I remember just thinking like please don't ask me to get in there like no, there's no, no way that no. I can yeah I was and I'm already this is TMI I'm already a sweaty person <laughs> like just but like add in and then add the pregnancy oh man it's <laughs> over yeah <laughs> Yeah, add in like the pregnancy and the 4th of July heat. I was like, yeah, okay. But I also needed to entertain her because I was like, the moment we go home, I'm like, oh, yep. So we had stayed out for a lot of that day, even in the heat. And we, like I said, so later that evening, my husband got home. My parents came over for a little 4th of July dinner. Mm -hmm. We didn't watch fireworks or anything since we're. We try to keep Ellie on a sleep schedule. And Mm -hmm. at the time, I want to say her bedtime was uh, a bit later just because the days, you know, with the sunshine are so much longer in the summer. And she did not like going to bed when the sun was out. She's like, it's still sunny. We're like, okay. So I think we, (laughs) yeah, I think we got her down around 9 p.m. that night. And something my husband and I try to do attempt to do every night is read scriptures Mm -hmm. and we sat down to read scriptures and that's like instantly when it came to my mind like you haven't felt Desmond move in a while like in my mind I'm like that's strange you know I'm just like but I I kind of went through each day that way kind of like oh now I can pay attention to you little guy you know like once Ellie's down but this felt different. It was like, no, I, I don't know the last time I felt to move. And so I called my sister, who's a labor and delivery nurse. Mm-hmm. So grateful for all of the knowledge she has. She's helped out so much. Anyway, she had the, like, I just thought I was overreacting because I, I had had, had 
like contractions the week before, just random ones, like where your belly really hardened. Yes. Yeah. And in my mind, I was feeling that that evening. And I was like, well, maybe that's him moving. I don't, you know, is that him moving or is that my belly? So I still wasn't very worried. And we had tried everything. The I ate like a ginormous bowl of strawberries with sugar. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I was jumping up and down even in my family room. And and I still, my sister said, yeah, you should, you should go in. And my thought process in the moment is like, I'm very aware of like, when I don't want to be the, the patient that's overreacting because I hear stories from my sister, yes, from my husband. Yeah. I hear it from my mother-in-law, who's also a nurse. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go in for a non-stress test, the NST. And knowing it was the 4th of July, I didn't go into my hospital that I was going to deliver at. I went to the closer one because I was like, I don't want to be on the freeways with drunk drivers. Yeah. So, but the whole way there, I don't even think I played music. And I, I just had Michael stay home because we had just put Ellie down. Right. So I think I left at 10 PM that night and I get there and I'm still just like absolutely no inkling like no worry I'm just like we're just here to double check and obviously if I was nervous I think I would have made sure Michael came with me yeah um and they took me right back and I I remember seeing my nurse Sheena and it looked like they had been busy or she had had like, oh, you know, a day, one of those evenings. And yeah. I was like, oh, I, yeah, I'm just a bother. But I'm like, it's fine. They do this all the time. It's going to be fine. And um, I remember she quickly put on the Doppler and didn't find a thing. And she said, well, let me just go grab the, the ultrasound machine. And I was like, oh, great. Like, I really need to pee. Like, this is my opportunity (laughs) or else I'm just going to have to lay here for a while. So I was like, okay, absolutely nothing in my mind still because I just went to the bathroom and I was like, maybe he's just hiding, you know? And it was the minute she put the little ultrasound thing on my belly and I've seen enough of the ultrasounds to know what the heart movement looks like. And instantly I saw it and didn't see anything. And it got very quiet and I could see it in her face. And I think that is the moment that I realized. And I have a really hard time crying and showing emotion in front of people. And so I, I think I waited until she left and went to go find the doctor that I just started sobbing. And I don't think I had called Michael at that point yet because I was going to wait to hear the doctor's words. And uh, Dr. Edmonds, who I have so much respect and love for, came in and he confirmed it to me that there is no heartbeat. And they instantly said, who can we call? Like, do you have someone that can come? And I just said, my husband's at home with my daughter. But I uh, instantly called him. And I just remember him like out loud, very loudly, what? And saying no. And he instantly goes into like, problem solving mode of like, I need to get I need to be with you. I need to be with you. Um, and it's 11 p.m. at this point. And so he starts calling all of our neighbors yeah. who also have little kids. So a lot of them didn't answer. They're probably all asleep. And so my job at that time, I knew I needed my mom to, they live 15 minutes from us. I needed to get attention or my mom to relieve whoever Michael was going to find. Cause I knew Michael would find someone. So just like, you know, to, bridge that gap of time before my mom could get there and like I had said we had joked with my mom you need to keep your phone on like don't silence it at night anymore because it was that night we had that discussion yeah and um excuse me I called 
I don't know how many times. I bet it was 45. I called my dad, same amount of time. Nothing. They had to have been out like a light, yeah. silenced their phones. And um, my family and I, we all have those Alexa Echoes. Oh, mm -hmm. they're like the screens Just, that mm -hmm. you can drop in on family members if you yeah. choose to have that function. And I remember having that thought after I was calling and calling and calling. So I dropped in on them from my phone. I can even do that. And yeah. I was just screaming to my mom, just someone wake up, like, I need you. And it probably alarmed them so much. And they came running, you know, yelling, what's up? And I just said, it's not good. I'm at the hospital. I need you to go to my house. Michael's getting someone right now. He's not here with me. And that was the end of that conversation. I didn't want to tell them especially since I didn't even, you know, get to cry with Michael about it yet. You know, I mean, we did over the phone for those few moments before he started calling. And so he finally found our neighbor, Kristen. Um, she had seen the call and she's like, why on earth is Michael calling me? You know, normally people would be like, that's a, but she saw Michael's name and said, why would Michael be calling me at this time of night? And probably thought to herself, yeah, it could have been a butt dial, but she said she just answered it for some reason. You know, they were in bed and she is so grateful to this day she answered it because she feels like she's been, you know, part of our story. And she has been. She had a sister who had lost a baby a few weeks after birth, I want to say, oh. tragically. And so she has been so kind and such a understanding person in all of this. Yeah. And so as Michael's driving to the hospital, we're on the phone, I'm sobbing. He's just saying, no, this can't be true. This can't be true. This can't be true. And um, it's a quick little drive. So before you know it, he was, he was there sobbing. And I'm back, I'm going to backtrack, but uh, Dr. Edmonds and Sheena both just held me and just cried with me. And and hugged me as I was there alone waiting for Michael to find someone and I will never forget them and their kindness and what a comfort that was and so yeah when Michael showed up I um had actually Michael does not cry I had never seen him cry in my life and he's wailing at this point and we both just are in disbelief and Dr. Edmonds and Sheena had given us time to just cry in that room. They didn't push us to make decisions or anything. And I think like the shock almost like set in like this, this can't be, you know, but I don't know if it was just like motherly instincts of like, okay, next thing I know what comes, I have to deliver him. I didn't ever want to choose a c-section you know if I had the choice and so they asked if you know we wanted to deliver vaginally and I, I wanted that and I was grateful for Dr. Edmonds because he said you have the choice to go home and then make your way over to the hospital that you planned to deliver at with Dr. Pearson but he said something that resonated with Michael and I and he said from my experience, it's good to have the mothers deliver at a different hospital so that you can keep your happy memories at the other. And at that moment, Michael and I are like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it here. And I think we even had the option to go home. And at that, I just said, no, we just have to get this done. <laughs> like we, we need to get him out, you know, because Michael and I both being in healthcare, we know that bodies can deteriorate fast. And that was like my worry throughout. Once we found out he had passed, I'm like, I don't know what state he's in. We need to get him out. Like I want him to, I don't know, be as perfect as he could be, yeah. you know, as close to what he might've been. Cause you know, you never know. And instantly you start going through all the thoughts in your mind of what could I have done wrong? How did this happen? I, I 
went right back into my mind of that moment that I tripped on the hike. I was thinking about all the excess caffeine I was drinking through Diet Coke and Coke Zero, like just anything and everything. Yeah. I yeah. thought about like so many different scenarios and Dr. Edmonds just flat out like, you did not cause this. You're going to tell yourself that, but you did not cause this. And he reassured me so many times, just don't even give it the thought because there's nothing that you could have done differently. And so, yeah, I think I want to say they started the induction after we got moved to a room and kind of got somewhat of a composure. But I just remember the next hours in between birthing him and, and waiting from that moment that they told us that we are constant roller coaster of okay we gotta we gotta make a decision here and then and then we'd start bawling again you know given time when the nurses are away or and then they just had so many things right like decisions to make about tests that you want to do they had already started talking to us about okay so there's options for burial and it's just so overwhelming. Yes. So overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember thinking to myself that kind of like I said earlier, like the motherly instinct kicked in and I was just bearing up for this childbirth. And I've always wanted to have a non-medicated birth. I didn't do that with my first. And so Desmond was going to be that non-medicated experience where I felt the labor. And I had expressed that to my nurse, Sheena. And she is so kind and so sweet. And she just told me, you know, I think with all of the emotional exhaustion you're going to be going through in these next hours, who knows how many hours it would be. If it were me, I'd be taking the medication. And at first I told her no. And then I remember thinking a little bit in the silence of Michael and I crying, just, yeah, I should, I should be present. And because if you're doing non-medicated, you know, you're kind of in your own world a bit. Yeah. <laughs> at least that's the way to do it, to try and not feel so much pain is mm -hmm. to, you know go into a meditative state and yeah and there's no way that I could have honestly with all the sobbing yeah yeah <laughs> so I'm glad she had said that and so they placed an epidural and the um, anesthesiologist had the hardest time oh. it was so strange <sighs> it was like I felt every little poke and oh. he had told me after he had finally got it done he's like most people's vertebrae are like this. Yours is like this. I'm like, well, that makes sense. Why I could feel every little adjustment that he made. And yeah, it almost, it was so strange. So that was really hard having to stay still for that. Cause I want to say I was having, like, I was starting to feel the contractions coming mm. on because they had broke my water and the medication. Yeah. They had gotten That's the funny. IV at that point. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was hard to stay still though. It, yeah. That was probably the toughest part for me because he would like flick the needle or it felt like it from behind. I don't yeah. know what he was doing and it would just send like shocks up my whole body. And yeah. So as far as like the epidural, that's the most that I remember about that experience. And then the rest is just kind of a blur of decisions being you know like questions being brought up decisions being made about when he comes do you want to have an autopsy which we absolutely I wanted to know everything that I could because it was such a fear of mine that I caused it and that I couldn't live knowing or not knowing what happened because those hours were just filled of filled with me questioning myself of what could I have done did I get sick was I eating too much turkey? 
you know, yeah, that was one of my like guilty pleasures is I love lunch meat when I'm pregnant. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. You so. Yeah. You question all your, yeah. You question the last nine months and doubt yourself and blame yourself. And yeah, it's all there. So you guys were at the hospital, you got uh, water broken, you had the medicine on. That was past midnight, right? Two, two three in the morning yeah. or so? I, I want to say the induction probably started, or the medication. Yeah. The Pitocin started at 1. Okay. 1 a.m. And even with the epidural, we there was no sleeping. Yeah. No. That no. whole night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and did you call your parents after that time, after you guys got into the room? Yeah. Um, it's kind of a blur mm -hmm. at what point we did. For sure it was before we delivered him, but I don't know. I don't recall if it was right after Michael had joined me. It, that part's a blur for me, for sure. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Um. So as you guys are making those decisions, what did you decide on some of those things that they were asking you about? Um, were you able to come up to any consensus on some of those things? I mean, obviously, it sounds like you wanted to do the aut autopsy for sure. Um, yeah. We were going to have them do an autopsy of the placenta mm -hmm. as well as take any and every blood test yeah known to mankind and that was really awesome with dr edmonds because he really ordered every single one that he knew of Thanks. i just remember being like i've never seen so many vials of blood yeah 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 and um some decisions at that point oh so they had brought up like are you gonna want to see him yeah you know and i was really nervous i didn't know you know i didn't not want to see my son, but I, I didn't want to be traumatized if there was something that, you know, was obvious. If I just had no idea what to expect. And they had said, you'll want to, regardless what he looks like, you're going to want to. And Michael and I said then and there, like, we'll just continue to feel it out, but just know, like, there's a question in our mind, you know? Yeah. And so that I think had been a little bit up in the air, but they had known like we were a little hesitant, yeah. just nervous out of pure, just yeah. what could have gone wrong. And, and is my poor little Desmond going to be disfigured or, mm -hmm. you know, your mind goes to all those different things. And so we just kept that up in the air. Didn't really give them a yes or a no, but we, we told them that we would, we would tell them when we knew if it was right for us to hold him. Okay. And this was one of the things that they asked us about was like, so where, which funeral home are you cremating? Are you burying? You, you probably went through those. Did they, or did they ask you that early on in the process? Um, It's unclear to me if that, that could have been something that they brought up, but I remember Sheena, our nurse that she had done my NST and she actually yeah. like took it upon herself. Like I'll be your, like, I'm going to be your nurse for this. Like I'm here with you. She was actually the bereavement coordinator for that oh. unit. And so she already had had all that knowledge and I felt so blessed that she was my nurse and that yeah. she was there that night because she had such a sensitive and good way of bringing up all these things. And uh, I think when she had asked us about a funeral home, she'd basically given us this huge folder, right? And said, it's up to you guys when you want to start reading and looking into all this stuff. But right now we don't have to worry about it. And so I don't, I don't think we necessarily made those types yeah. of decisions okay. yet at that point. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, so your labor is progressing. Can you kind of just tell me? Um, as as it got closer and, and when you actually gave birth? So it's so funny. The hours from 1 to 6 a.m., 
I don't remember anything about truly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll, I can start from six though. Yeah. Six <laughs> I remember great. that being a big turning point. Yeah. So we still hadn't slept and they had checked me and I believe I was at a four. Okay. And so we hadn't brought anything and Michael had rushed over. Yeah. Like that wasn't even in no. his mind of no. like, let's yeah. grab stuff. Uh, so my nurse at 6 a.m. She's like, it's close to shift change, but right now is probably a good time to get some of your stuff. And maybe we can give you some Benadryl or whatnot to get you sleeping. And so we were starting to kind of wind down to, to bear up for, to get ready for all what's yeah. to come. Yeah. And so they said, well, I asked her, I was like, so if I'm a four right now, like what time? would you say like what window she's like probably noon I said okay like so we had Michael go home so that he could pick up all the stuff that we needed Mm -hmm. and this is the most wild part of it all within that hour I went from four to complete it was so shocking like six to seven six to seven you went whoa okay so not only did I not have Michael with me there, yeah, but my call light was out of reach. <gasps> and the only reason I hadn't fallen asleep yet is because there must have been like a kink in my epidural or something because I was feeling it mm. and I was pressing this button and it wasn't working. And I, so I called Michael on my phone on speaker and I am just like, in big pain yeah because it was not delivering it quick enough or something I don't necessarily know how the epidurals work very great but he had just gotten to the house so this is like 15 minutes later we live 15 minutes from the hospital I am like about in tears like Michael I don't know what to do I can't reach the call light I'm feeling so much pain and he just stayed on the phone and he tried his best to grab everything and we didn't know that I was like complete at this time, right? Yeah. So I, he was just thinking he was calming me through all of the pain right. and that he was going to try and quickly get be back. back. So yeah. I, yeah. And, and you know what? There was a call light that I couldn't reach, but there's a call light on the bed too. Oh, uh-huh. mm-hmm. That one wasn't working. Oh, so of it course. was like, just like the perfect storm. And I remember them saying how it was. Um, shift change and basically everyone's kind of running about you know yeah giving report mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I didn't think I would see Dr. Edmonds and he came in and could tell by my face like I'm white I am grabbing onto the bed sobbing and he's like I just had a feeling I should come in I'm like oh you know like thank goodness because he just held my hand until Michael could get there and just sat on my bed and just held while I squeezed it so hard. And um, that's when I started to t- like feel the pressure down yeah. below mm-hmm. that I don't remember feeling with my first, with mm. that delivery. I don't remember feeling the pressure at all. Like, And then I started to feel the ring of fire too. I didn't feel the contractions up in my belly, but uh-huh. I felt everything down, down. below. Okay. And... At that point, he's like, why don't we get you checked out? And he's like, you are complete. So I held Desmond in until Michael got there the 10 minutes later or whatever. And he had called Sheena back, even though she was giving report to the other nurses. And I believe, and my new nurse came in, she was already there for the day. And so he, Desmond came out with, I feel like it had to have been like one push because because he was soon as Michael came in, I was ready. Yeah, and yeah. he was born at seven oh five. Oh my goodness! Yeah, seven oh five, and I was. I want. I'm pretty, pretty one hundred percent positive. I was a four at six a.m. <sighs> so, no idea how that happened. That was <laughs> but so. Fast. Luckily, Michael got there in time and. Again, everything is just such a blur from that point on too, but I do distinctly remember 
like the minute he came out, I was like, I want to see him. I want to hold him. I had no questions, no fears at that point anymore. I was like, he's mine. And they did um, skin to skin. And I just remember the most heartbreaking part is when they laid him on me, I just saw how limp he was. And, you know, the the absence of crying wasn't as as tough for me just because uh with my first she didn't cry as well they had to have the NICU team in and so I I hadn't experienced like the screen you know right out of the womb and so it was it, the reality hit when he was laid on me and and he was limp but he was perfect absolutely perfect and I remember first thing I noticed, of course, like I said, he was real squishy. Yeah. He had really cute, squishy cheeks. Um, but I noticed immediately his lips were just black and blue, you know, just as a sign of like oxygen deprivation. But no one said that to me. Mm-hmm. I just had that in my mind of like, it must be from that, you know. So. Um, and I remember feeling how warm he was and you just don't think about those things like how warm he was like it almost like caught me off guard but of course he was warm because I had been warming him and yeah um and so I delivered the placenta really soon after and I can't recall my husband will be able to recall but I can't recall if my husband cut the cord because right after uh, Dr. Edmund says, I, I am pretty sure I know what it is if you want to know what happened. And no question in my mind. I'm like, yes, please. Yeah. And so he showed us the umbilical cord and it was an extremely tight knot. Oh, it was a true knot. And he said, I know it's this because the side that's connected to your placenta was colorful, had blood. The side that was connected to Desmond was absolutely clear, stretched out. And I don't think I knew this until later on when I read my own charts, mm -hmm. like through the little app that they give you. You Mm -hmm. can read everything from your hospital stay. And it said that he had the cord wrapped around him twice around his neck and then it like extended from his shoulders to his waist. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, they did tell us that in person because he had a very obvious X mark in oh. his coloration. Yeah. Just from how tight that how was. How tight it was. Yeah. Just on his shoulder. And that stayed with him the whole time we had him. That little mark never came off. It was just completely white where the cord was. And so. From that point on, I I didn't worry about, you know, what could it be? We knew what it was. And I think that was a tender mercy for me because if you know me and my personality, I tend to just question myself and think, think, you know, and that's one of my things that I'm still working on as an adult, (laughs) but I tend to blame things on myself. And so that was a huge tender mercy that I feel is from God because like I think I would have gone to my grave blaming myself and a true knot like that yeah they say it happens in the first trimester when there's lots of amniotic fluid yeah even though I I distinctly remember I could have been in my second trimester I distinctly (laughs) remember I was playing with my nieces and nephews and we had a pogo stick out and I'm pogo sticking. And my mom's like, you can't be pogo sticking. You're pregnant. And I'm just laughing at her like, Oh, I'm fine. I'm like, but they, I even, I even told my doctors that I was like, is, could I have, you know, bounced him around so much and the way the amniotic fluid is there's, there's absolutely no way. And I think it's still a blessing that I consider every day that, you know, we do know because the 
the pain of not knowing for me is really hard to understand and to move on from. And so it was, yeah, we have, I don't know if I actually got a picture on my phone from that. I should look that up. Oh, the actual, like. It was of the knot. Of the knot. Oh, okay. And I've looked up other true knots on the internet. And there are none that compare to how tight. Oh, really? So to this day, I still think maybe he started dropping and that's when it could have truly just cinched. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And especially with how tight it was around him. And it makes sense why he only stayed on that and left the one side, side for the it last little while. Yeah. I think he was just really trying to. He probably couldn't move very much. Yeah. Is my thought. Wow. So. Oh. And the poor little guy probably was just trying to move. And I would get so upset at him for being it up in my ribs. <laughs> I remember even that night as I laid, this is the 4th of July night, Mm -hmm. as I laid Ellie down in her crib, I remember the most excruciating rib pain Mm. because he, he was right. He had, he could have passed by then, obviously, because that's when we had thought to ourselves, he stopped moving. And so normally he might've moved when I had like dropped her down in the crib, but I felt so much pain in that left side where he was at and those ribs. And, and I remember coming down those stairs and I, I will say it, I cussed him out on the way down. I was like, dude, just get out of my ribs. And then I remember thinking after, as I'm holding him, I'm like, I would take your rib pain any day, (laughs) little guy. Like I just kept sobbing and apologizing that I would ever say something my sweet little boy but yeah I feel like I've been able to get past that and forgive myself for that but I and now it's something like I feel like I can giggle about like yeah you were in my ribs and I was just so frustrated but I will take rib pain any day all day every day if I could have you here and yeah so oh um, so you guys did skin to skin and, um, did Michael end up holding him for some time? Did he, was he feeling okay? Because you guys had both had some reservations and so, um, yep. he did. Yeah. We both just spent the entire day holding him and they did bring in a cuddle cot. Okay. The big cooling pad cuddle mm-hmm. cot. And what's sad is it was working for the first little bit and then it stopped. Oh. And Michael's dad mode of like taking care of his son was hyper focusing on how to fix it. Like he had taken that upon himself. Like we are going to fix this thing. And it took a lot of effort and it still, they just couldn't fix it, which is like worrying to me, but. Like another tender mercy is he just continued to look good. Mm. And he did come out with one little sore on his heel where the skin had come off. Yeah. But that was it. Like he just, he just looked so good. And I remember not wanting to give personal calls to my siblings because it was just hard enough for me to, you know, be in the moment with my emotions and not be thinking because again like I said I have a hard time showing emotion even with my family around and so I wasn't ready to to tell them and so we had asked both of our parents like you can tell the family just let them know we'll reach out when we're ready to like the siblings and and then we hadn't told our parents necessarily to come And I remember it was around the afternoon after Michael and I just had the whole morning with him that we finally said, I think we need to give our parents the option because we were more nervous because we being the parents being nervous to hold him, I didn't want to put a person like my parents in a situation. Yes. Yes. 
yeah, where they felt obligated. Like I just didn't want that uncomfortable feeling. So we kind of wrestled with that throughout the day, even though like in my mind, he's my son. Like there is absolutely no question yeah. after, as soon as I delivered him, I'm like, Oh, let me have him. You know, yeah. like we never, we never set him down really. And, um, so we, we called my parents and his parents and I was just so grateful with both of their reactions. My mom was just waiting for the invitation, which I learned, which like meant so much to not have to worry about them being guarded about the situation. Yeah. And, yeah. and like, I was just so grateful to know, like, they thought the same thing, like, no, no, please. Like I want to see him. And so I think at that point, my parents, my, my dad joined my mom at that point at our house watching Ellie and Michael's parents came first. And I'll just never forget. We all just kind of held each other and sobbed over, over his little bassinet. They were, they were all very gracious and, and excited to see him. And, and then Michael's parents left to go switch my parents out. Yeah. So again, this is the blessing of having all of our family close. Like it was just seamless transition of Ellie had someone to care for her with grandparents who have watched her so many times before. Yeah. And, and so that was good. And our parents had had a relationship with each other too, but yeah. I felt like it just became that much closer. Like Desmond brought them together as well as all of our siblings together. And so on that note, um, my parents came and they spent a lot of time with Desmond and I distinctly remember my mom like instinctively rocking oh. him as if you know he's there with us and um it was it was really sweet and we decided not to have our siblings in the room with him and we also chose not to have Ellie there too we had we had talked so much about baby brother baby Desmond yeah that he was coming and I'm telling you we were trying the hardest we could so that she didn't have a power struggle when he would arrive yeah and so our biggest fear was her being even more confused yeah and so she never saw Desmond but since then she knows her baby brother Desmond and she knows him by his pictures and by his grave and you know she knows her her baby she calls him baby desm she can't say desmond desm. yeah That's baby a, desm adorable it is too sweet yeah yeah really so, mm -hmm. oh and um this particular hospital did they have a any sort of policy on how long you could keep desmond he, they probably did but i think sheena my nurse so we had Erica during the day and then Sheena returned Came back. that okay. evening. Yeah. And I was so grateful too. Yeah. That means a lot when you can have a familiar face again, mm -hmm. not have to, you know, reintroduce Go. the grief to someone else. Yep. Mm -hmm. so we were so grateful because we had truly like gone through everything with Sheena that day because it was just us for quite some time. Yeah. And uh, so I think they told us. They weren't going to move us to the maternal floor. Yeah, yeah. The mom and baby floor. And this hospital is a smaller community hospital, so they didn't have, like, a a different recovery area for mm. moms that lost their baby. So I think that's why they're like, let's keep you in labor delivery. And so since he was born at 7 a.m., she honestly didn't even tell us, like, this is when you'll have to give him back. She's like, you guys take your time. Okay. And 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 how so, were you, how are you feeling like after the delivery was were there any issues complications or anything like that? Um, physically, I was doing okay. Okay. Um I had only had one a first degree tear mm -hmm. and that was better than with my first. Yeah. I had a second degree and that was rough. 
Um, I did get stitched up, but I don't remember necessarily having too rough of a time. I mean, you always remember the first walk to the bathroom. <laughs> At like, the trial. I don't yeah. feel my legs. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that happened for quite some time because I think since I had felt everything down below and I had delivered, he started stitching me and I was like, should I be feeling all of this? And he's like, no. So I think they gave me another dose. And so I had like the noodle <sighs> legs forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and, um, I remember just like they kept saying, you guys should probably eat. Just kept saying, there's no way I can eat right now. Um, So it got into the evening and we had started reading the packets. And once Sheena came back, since she was the bereavement coordinator, we got more serious about making decisions. And so um, we had two mortuaries in mind and we decided on the one and we hadn't told them when we were ready to let him go yet but we just wanted to make sure someone was available that evening into the morning so that they could so we had contacted them and they were aware and then I knew our nurse Sheena had um she had contacted the share parents of Utah oh local Uh chapter to make sure that someone would come and do Desmond's molds. Yeah. And little uh, hand and foot molds. um, Yeah. Yeah. Which is so, so yeah. Awesome. It's so awesome. Incredible. And they're all done by volunteer as I'm sure everyone knows that's listening. Maybe some don't, but uh, they had a hard time finding volunteers that were available that day. Day after 4th of July, it was a Wednesday. Everyone went back to work. And they had gotten a volunteer all the way from Nephi, Utah. And to give an idea, we live in South Jordan. Yeah. So it was a good two and a half, yeah. maybe three hour drive she made. That and she is got there so yeah, kind. around like 10 or 11. Oh. Such a kind soul. Her name was Amber. Remember Amber? So, so sweet. That and is amazing. Yeah, and she had experienced a loss in her third trimester or maybe her second trimester, I can't remember, but her her son, it was a son as well that had passed and she was so sweet with him and we let her do the molds as we watched and we were given the option to do a face mold. Oh, and that was one I had never heard of. I haven't either. And one thing Michael and I said to ourselves is we didn't want to regret anything. So I was going to take every opportunity, you know, like I wanted to say yes and have everything I could Mm -hmm. to remember him. But I remember telling them I can't be in the room when that happens, you know, like just seeing his face submerged would do something to me. And, but I was like, we're just going to go for a walk when you start that. And Uh, Sheena was in the room while Amber was doing that and Amber I think Sheena had mentioned that they needed some Vaseline for him so that the it would um, yeah it wouldn't slough off the skin would be yeah more preserved yeah and luckily Sheena having that mindset um she kind of stopped it from happening first so that we could make sure you know that he would have his beautiful skin um, after he was in the molds. And they could not find the right stuff for his face. And so we made the decision like, okay, let's just not in this case. Because, yeah, the skin is like it's, a huge deal. Yeah, And on his face. And at that point, he was only being covered with cold packs. And so... I'm just grateful Sheena was more worried about his skin than yeah. I I would, didn't have that thought in my mind. Yeah. So we didn't do the face molds, but they uh, Amber did beautiful hand and foot molds. Yeah. And we have two sets. And so we're grateful for that too, because toddlers, you know, you never know what they can climb into. And yep. But anyway, so um 
it was that night after we had done the molds, Amber, our volunteer, she was going to do some photography and we hadn't placed any clothes on him. He had a hat and we just were swaddling him. Yeah. And so we were thinking, well, maybe we give him like a little bath and maybe dress him and then start to take a lot of photos. And this could have been 11 or midnight. And at that point, I didn't know this. My husband had noticed this, but we were washing him and I moved his head. And I remember hearing the worst pop noise of my life. It just took me off guard. And I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep moving his sweet little body after that. And there's part of me that wished I could have done more photos and more poses. But I told Amber at that point, I can't move his little body anymore. Like I can't keep, you know, disturbing his little body because it was getting to be fragile at that point. And that's when my mama bear said no more. Like, and that's when I think Michael and I realized we need to let his little body rest. That's just what we kept saying is we've had the whole day with him. I think we need to let his little body rest. It was really hard. Like that, that moment, like deciding to, to have him go, but my heart couldn't see him being moved anymore. Uh, even though he still looked great, you know, but there was something in my mind of like, this is how I'm going to take care of him. We're going to take care of him by letting him be in a mortuary where they can properly like keep him preserved. Yeah. And so we had called for the mortuary to come and nicest guy came. Cannot recall anything about him, his name or anything, but he was so nice. And um, they had kind of explained to us that they're going to take him in the bassinet away from our site because then they had to place him, or I think Sheena had told us this, but they have to place him in more of something that doesn't necessarily look like there should be a sweet little baby in it. And yeah. Sheena had said, you, you probably don't want to see that. And we agreed. And so they took him with a, I want to say a security officer was there too, but and Sheena, our nurse, and she said, I will make sure to cuddle him up so sweetly with all the blankets that we had. And we were given so much stuff too. So at that point, I don't even remember what blanket he was, he was taken away in Yeah. Um, because a lot of them weren't ours. I think Michael had just brought the one minky blanket for him. And we decided to keep that with us that yeah. night. And I've actually slept with that blanket every night since. Yeah. Just to feel like he's with me. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was very difficult. And we didn't think we we'll, we would be able to sleep that night, but I think we were just absolutely exhausted. <laughs> and I we we got Benadryl in our systems and slept and woke up to an empty labor and delivery room and at that point I think they unofficially officially discharged us but they were giving us as much time as we wanted to leave they were just and they had us in the very back of the unit so we didn't necessarily hear crying and all of that so we just kind of took our time and Leaving the hospital is one of the worst experiences I'll remember. Driving away empty-handed. It's really one of those things you don't forget. Um, and a little bit more detail about like the burial plans and whatnot. We decided to bury him. We didn't want him cremated. And the mortuary that we chose didn't do embalmings and so we were very worried about like his body staying you know in the best shape possible and so the minute we got home again mom and dad mode we've got to take care of Desmond somehow so we're gonna plan this thing 
we're going to do it quick so that, you know, he can be in the best shape for his little bear heel day. And so, um, yeah, we went home on Thursday morning and he was buried on Saturday. Oh, wow. The mortuary was really good to us and we were able to get it all arranged that quickly. And because again, my number one concern was his little body just needs to rest. And since they're not going to embalm him, yep. we need to need to let him lay down to rest. So that's what we did. Wow. Did you guys have a little funeral service or a graveside or anything like that? Yeah, okay. we chose to have all of our siblings and our parents just at a small, and my grandma, at a small graveside service. And I believe Michael, one of Michael's uncles was there and aunt. So we kept it really small. And he's buried in a cemetery that's five minutes away from us. Mm. We've even taken our bike over there before. And there's like a little park. And it's just a cute little community cemetery. And there's baby land. Yes. So he's buried next to all these other sweet babes. And it's just a special little spot. It's like the most perfect little cemetery. And we, that day was really hard. But at the same time, we had our family just all stayed in our home. And our home's not big. But everyone just stayed. And it was just company. And it was good. Because we weren't sure if we wanted to be alone the rest of the day. So we had told our family, like, we don't know what the day is going to bring, but we want you there. And we had a luncheon. And then the last thing I wanted to do was go home alone. And so every single one of them spent as much time as they could in our home. And I've never truly seen both sides of our families interact so much. And from that day on, like everyone, I feel like are pretty good friends with each other. And, you know, like. Michael's siblings know my nieces and nephews enough yeah. now that we can talk about them with them and they you know <laughs> it's it's fun and so that was a really hard and really comforting day at the same time yeah but Michael dedicated his grave with a prayer and uh it was just a short service and one thing that everyone remembered is that there were like there had to have been 10 to 20 different helicopters that was flying over at the time of his, uh, I don't think we were in the middle of the service, but right before. Mm -hmm. And everyone had known the story of why we named him Desmond. And I feel like in a way, like our ties to Desmond, it's a little bit patriotic. And everyone was like, it was a little flyover. And yeah. That was one of the things I remember. And I also remember during the, we had a bishop that spoke about at the graveside, speaking about life after death. And because of Jesus Christ, we can see Desmond again. And we truly believe that. And I just remember having the hardest time focusing on this beautiful talk because my daughter's right there on the ground. Oh, she was saying some funny things like very loudly. And I can't remember what they were, but it was something like, I want more snacks and, you know, (laughs) other things that toddlers say. And it was like, uh, it was just cute. Yep. (laughs) So I have those memories. That is life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That is life. Chelsea, that, thank you so much for sharing. I actually had a couple more questions if you don't mind, because I should have asked these earlier. But um, how big was Desmond? Like how how much did he weigh and how how long was he? He was 21 inches. So he was tall. He was tall. Yeah. Yeah. And he weighed seven pounds, four ounces. Oh, he was a good little size there. Yep. Yeah. So we saw a lot of sevens. (laughs) Yeah. He was born on 7-5, weighed 7-4, yeah. yeah. was 21, and there was another 7. Anyway, I mean born at 7. Oh, yeah, 7 that's right. Yep. So 
Yeah, there's a lot of. And stuff you know what? It, this is this is. I'll have to confirm with Michael. It might have been seven seventeen, and I misspoke earlier when he was born at seven oh five. I think it was. We'll have to. We'll have to confirm with him. Yeah, you know those things kind of just. Yeah, your brain is, does funny things to you, and so there are there's a yep. number of details that sometimes go by the wayside. So, um, but Chelsea, thank you so much for sharing. Desmond, um, is there any last little bit of anything you would like to tell us about him or what you want to remember about him? I mean, other than the fact that he was perfect, I hold on to belief that he is, he's alive. You know, you know, his spirit is alive and we try to feel like we're connected each day. And so there are times that I think, well, maybe that's a little tender mercy from Desmond. And I think that I will just always remember his perfect little self, his little hands and his feet and his, he was born like truly in a squished manner. <laughs> like his face was pretty squished and uh-huh. it was just so sweet. And yeah, we'll just always Remember him as our sweet Des, our little Des. Thank you again, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you so much.